Hello students, I'm your geology professor, Dr. Abstract. In today's video, I'm going to crush and destroy perfectly beautiful crystals in order to demonstrate for you how to properly observe and identify cleavage, which is a very important mineral property. Without recognizing cleavage in minerals, it's going to be difficult to identify them correctly. Now, cleavage is also a really funny word because you have the maturity of a 13-year-old, and that means that some of you are not going to be able to handle it. So before I move on, I want you to just get all this little cleavage snickering and giggling out of your system. So I'm going to count to three, and I want you to press pause, and then go maybe put your face in a pillow and scream, or do a little cleavage joke dance, or whatever you have to do to get it out of your system so that you can come back here with me and be ready for your learnings. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, press pause. Okay, haha, -ha, very funny. Got that out of your system now? Okay, yeah, you are so clever. I've never, ever, ever heard cleavage jokes before. Anyways, can we move on? So cleavage refers to a special mineral property in which a mineral will break along specific planes in its structure. That means it breaks along flat surfaces. So if I were to take a crystal, smash it with a hammer, the pieces are going to have these beautiful flat, flat surfaces on them. Not all minerals have cleavage. So quartz, for example, does not have cleavage. So if I were to smash a crystal of quartz, it's going to break into smaller particles that don't have these flat planes on it. Another way to think about cleavage is weaknesses in the structure. Uh, and these weaknesses occur, they don't occur randomly, they occur along specific planes between specific bonds of minerals, and those bonds are weaker than other bonds in the mineral. So why does cleavage occur in planes? Well, the answer is because the atoms themselves are arranged in planes. So here's a nice view of the atomic structure of the mineral halite. And what you can see is the atoms are arranged in these beautiful planes. That's what it means to be a mineral, by the way, is to have these ordered arrangements of atoms that occur in planes. So if the atoms occur in planes, then the bonds between the atoms right here, all through here, the bonds are also occurring in planes, okay? And so if, the bond, if some planes of bonds are weaker than other planes of bonds, then you're going to get cleavage in that mineral. So when you break a crystal that has cleavage, it prefers to to break along those planes. We call that preferential weakness. It's not random, it's along specific planes. The opposite of cleavage is called fracture, and that's when breakage occurs randomly throughout a crystal structure. And that's because the bond strength is the same everywhere you go. There are no preferred planes of weaknesses in crystals that experience fracture, okay? So cleavage, preferred planes of weakness, preferred planes of breakage, fracture, random breakage because the bond strength is the same everywhere in the structure. Now, it can be tricky because some minerals have, they break only along cleavage planes, some minerals only break according to fracture, and some minerals have a combination of both. So some minerals will have cleavage in one direction, two directions, but then will break along a fracture pattern or lack of a pattern in other directions. Okay, now in a little bit, I'm going to demonstrate uh, what cleavage is using natural crystals. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to give you a different kind of a demonstration uh, using food. And I think these foods are going to help you have an intuitive understanding for what we mean by cleavage and what we mean by when something doesn't have cleavage, okay? So first, I'm gonna take a trip to the grocery store. I'm gonna go buy some garbage junk food that I should not be eating, but that's okay because what's more important is your education, and I am here to serve you so that you can understand geology and minerals. So I'll be right back. Okay, well, I'm back from the grocery store, and I got this uh, little piece of, uh, health food here. Some people call it a Kit Kat bar. And again, what we're trying to do is learn about cleavage and how cleavage works. And remember, cleavage means weaknesses in a structure, in a crystalline structure, so that when you break it, the breakage occurs along planes. So let's, let's try this. So first of all, it looks like there's some cleavage planes 
in this KitKat. And so I want to try to break it like this and let's see what happens. It's going to break. Oh my goodness, look, it broke along a plane of weakness. Oh, but it gets better because as many of you know, if you take a KitKat bar and you look at it on this, from this angle, I can actually break it again. And there's planes of weakness that occur here. And look at that. Oh my God, I just made another um, plane here. This is really analogous to how cleavage works in minerals, really. And um, so when that happens, you're going to get create these uh, these planes that are going to be like this. Okay, that's an example of cleavage in a kit pot bar. Okay, now I've got a different candy bar. Some of you guys might recognize this as a Snickers bar. Okay, so I'll try to break it. I'll try to break it like this. Let's see what happens. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Oh, now let's see. Does that look like a flat, flat plane to you? That's not flat at all. That's jagged. It's got a lot of jaggedness to it. If I break it like this, that's not a nice, clean, flat plane. In fact, it's got all this weird goo in here. There's nothing flat. This is very random. Um, if look on this side here, this side here also doesn't have any. It's not, I mean, there's a breakage, but it's not on perfectly flat lines. So this is, Snickers to me is analogous to, to fracture in, in minerals, not cleavage. Can I break this muffin? Can I reproduce this surface down here? Let's see. And oh my goodness, it's not breaking in any way that's related to this flat surface out here. So when I try to break it up, oh my, it just kind of crumbles apart. It doesn't have any, any regular breakage whatsoever. In fact, this is analogous to fracture. So when this is this is how quartz behaves, by the way. Here's a this is a piece of, of lemon cake. And wouldn't you know, there's some there's a flat surface here, flat surface there, flat surface there, flat surface here, flat surface there. The whole thing, I mean, except for the icing here, the whole thing is essentially flat surfaces. So let's see what happens. If I break it, am I going to create more flat surfaces through here? Let's see what happens when I Break it apart. Oh my goodness, look at that. There are, when I break it, the breakage doesn't give me any flat surfaces. It's just breaking randomly in any direction that it wants to. So, okay, so to review, we have the Kit Kat bar, the only uh, candy bar there that, that shows any form of cleavage. And the other things, they break randomly. Okay, so that was fake cleavage in food. Uh, so now let's move on to looking at real cleavage in natural minerals. And I picked some really nice looking mineral specimens. We call them euhedral. That means they have beautiful faces uh, because I want to crush them and destroy them. And let's see if those beautiful faces are repeated in the smaller fragments. Okay, so here's our quartz crystal with a paper clip for scale. And it's got beautiful faces on it. And these faces are formed by growth, not by breaking. And if I hold it like this, you can see a beautiful hexagonal cross section of it. Um, and there we go, there's our beautiful quartz crystal. All right, and now this is a little crystal of halite, and I made this by breaking it off of a bigger crystal. So already it has some cleavage surfaces, but I want you to get a good look at them. They're nice and flat. They have 90 degree angles to them. Um, that's a characteristic of the mineral halite. And what we're going to see is these 90 degree angles are going to be maintained even after we crush it to bits. Okay, and finally, we've got this uh, calcite crystal. And again, I made this by breaking it off of a bigger crystal. So it already has some cleavage surfaces on it. Now, at first glance, you might think this looks just like the halite crystal. But if you look carefully at the angles on the sides and the faces there, they are not 90 degrees. They're more like uh, 80 degrees, 100 degrees. All right, and to sum up, we've got our beautiful hexagonal quartz crystal, our halite crystal, and our calcite crystal. Let's go smash them up and see what happens. All right, there's the quartz crystal, and now let's destroy it. All right, there's our halite, and let's hammer that up. And finally, our beautiful calcite. Bye-bye. All right.
Uh, let's see the results microscopically. Uh, here are some quartz shards uh, that were created by breaking that beautiful crystal. And the first thing you should notice is that those beautiful crystal faces are gone. That's because those faces uh, weren't formed by breaking. They were formed by growing the crystal. And so when I break the crystal, it's going to break in a pattern that's defined by fracture, which again is the cracking that occurs when the bond strength is the same in all directions in our quartz. It's not going to break along preferred directions. It's going to break randomly. And that's why we get these shards that, that don't look anything like the starting crystal. All right, here's a microscopic view of the smashed up halite crystal. And remember, halite has cleavage. So when it breaks, it's going to break along these preferred planes of weakness in the atomic structure. And so unlike quartz, when we broke it, the little shards didn't look anything like the original crystal. For halite, when I break it, since they break along cleavage planes, these faces and the angles between the faces are going to be very similar to what we started with, right? So halite has really excellent cleavage. All right, and here's our little baby calcite crystals that we made uh, by smashing up the original one. And Hopefully you'll notice that these also have very flat faces and they have angles that are uh, the same as the original crystal. So just like with halite, when we smashed up the calcite grain, which, which has cleavage, we're gonna make smaller grains that are very similar to the ones we started with. That's because everything's breaking along the same planes in the atomic structure. Okay, so we just saw some great examples of cleavage and minerals at high magnification using the zoom lens of a camera, which is really not much more than a glorified magnifying glass, kind of like this little gadget, which we call a hand lens. And this is something that geologists would take in the field. Maybe I find a rock specimen like this and I'll use my hand lens to magnify the minerals, maybe decide if there's cleavage or not. But remember, cleavage is something that occurs uh, at the atomic scale, right? So between atoms, and so that means it's gonna occur at much higher magnifications than we can get using a hand lens or the zoom lens of the camera. So that's why we're down here to hang out with this bad boy, a scanning electron microscope or SEM. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the same little crushed up bits of quartz, calcite and halite that we just looked at using the zoom lens, but we're gonna put them in the SEM. We're gonna to go to really, really high magnification. We're talking length scales shorter than the width of a human hair. And what you're gonna see is cleavage and fracture like you've never seen it before. And I hope this will help you really understand what it means. But I just wanna warn you that going to high magnification can get pretty wild sometimes. So I think you should probably go find someone special to share this moment with. Uh, I don't want you to be alone because it's about to get real, real nerdy. Okay, so the first step is to mount our crystals on this sticky carbon tape. So we're gonna mush it into these calcite fragments. And we use this carbon tape because it conducts electrons, which we need for a scanning electron microscope. And look at that, all stuck onto there. And we're gonna do the same thing with our halite crystals, and we'll do the same thing with our quartz. And there we go. Now we're gonna take these little stubs and put them in what we call a stage. And we're gonna make sure that carbon tape touches the stage. Now we're going to blow off any loose bits with this high pressure blower so we don't break our machine. And there we go. We got our quartz and our halite and there's the calcite ready to go. Okay, now we have to load our stage into this little port in the SEM. Kind of reminds me of something from Star Wars. Okay, so here's a first view of some of the crystals in the instrument, but we need to go to scanning electron mode. So we're going to have to pump down the vacuum and press this button and listen. That's the sound of the pump whistling away to take us into scanning electron mode. All right, now wait for it and boom, there you go. Your first scanning electron microscope image of a halite crystal. And this crystal is about a millimeter long. All right, now let's uh, zoom in. Now see all those straight lines? That's cleavage. Cleavage at a microscopic scale. See, look here at all these straight cracks. This is where the crystal broke. 
Look at that. It's got a little square-shaped thing, even. We'll zoom in even more. This is about, I don't know, a few tens of microns wide. And look at that beautiful right angle right there. Look at these straight lines everywhere, another right angle. Look up here. Here's some straight lines right there and lots of right angles. Uh, not every crack is perfectly flat. Um, there's some jaggedness to it, but there's definitely a lot in there that is nice and flat and at right angles. And look, even look, let's zoom right in there. Look at that. It's like a little um, 90 degree snaggle tooth right there. That's not a coincidence. That's cleavage. All right, now let's go over and look at our calcite and look at these beautiful flat cleavage cracks. And here's another example, beautiful flat surfaces created by breaking. Here's some tiny shards. You know, these are just like tens of microns, maybe maybe 100 microns wide. All the little shards have the same flat surfaces. And look, here's an area where there's a bunch of breakage. And look, all the cracks are all flat. And this is of scale of about 100 microns. So this is really tiny, very, very tiny cracks. And again, these straight cracks are created by planes in the atomic structure that are weak. And if we zoom in, this is just like a few tens of microns even. We can get really, really fine cleavage cracks there. Look at that. All right, now let's look at quartz, which doesn't have cleavage. And look at all these cracks. All these cracks are curved. None of them are straight. That's because these curved cracks are breaking more randomly. We might call this conchoidal fracture, it kind of breaks like a shell. But all of these curved lines are not cleavage. Cleavage must be straight. And look, at, even if you look really, really microscopically, this is just tens of microns here. All these cracks are curved. So this is a scale of uh, a few hundred microns, and there are zero straight cracks on this. This is breaking by fracture. It's breaking randomly. And you can see little families of cracks that kind of look like they're in the similar direction, but they are not parallel to each other. Here's a beautiful example of non-parallel curved fracture cracks in this quartz crystal. Um, again, we're at maybe a couple hundred microns. Really, 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 really close up here in our scanning electron microscope. And there is no cleavage at all. Okay, so we just saw examples of cleavage at different magnification levels in different minerals. And on a final note, I just want to mention that we use words to describe cleavage like fair, poor, good, excellent, because sometimes cleavage can be really obvious. Like in a mica, for example, we say mica has perfect cleavage. Does this really obvious? You can literally peel away layers of mica because there's cleavage that occurs between the layers of mica. But there are other minerals that have fair or poor cleavage, and it's just not going to be obvious. Um, and you're going to be confused. And that's totally normal. So I'm here to, to just give you a big hug to tell you it's going to be okay. Sometimes nature is a jerk, and she can be really confusing. She doesn't really care about our needs. And that's just normal. It happens to me all the time to get confused at, at whether or not a mineral has cleavage or whatever. It's just, it's just nature. Uh, anyways, I hope this video was useful to you. If uh, you are a rock hound, I hope it helps you to identify minerals when you're out hiking or looking for rocks. If you're a student, I hope that this video helps you get a good grade on your next exam, which will lead to a higher paying career, which will lead to a quality spouse and hopefully children. I'm Dr. Abstract. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Tectonic City, and you should probably subscribe to this YouTube channel because all that happens here is learning. I don't want you to miss any of it, okay? Yeah.